All right, so let's talk about testosterone in general, in particular for men. Uh, testosterone levels, first of all, uh, you want to look at it depends on the lab and the testing method in terms of uh, the amount of testosterone. So you do not want to compare saliva testosterone measurements to serum testosterone measurements. Serum is the most accurate. Then also you want to remember there's a difference between free testosterone and total testosterone. Only the free is active. In general, in men, normal levels for total testosterone are going to be between 270 to 1,000 milligrams uh, nanograms per deciliter serum, and women 50 uh, to 70. Here is uh, an important chart to understand in the production of testosterone. First of all, if you look up at the top and follow the arrows, cholesterol makes pregnenolone, which is the mother hormone, and then pregnenolone is made into progesterone and 17-hydroxy pregnenolone, both of which produce 17-hydroxy progesterone. Now that's in black there because 17-hydroxy progesterone is a hormone that will be measured on an adrenal stress index test. So you've seen that uh, before. As we work our way down, 17-hydroxy pregnenolone over on the left then is made into DHEA and then androstenediol. diol. And then if you, as you move from the left to right, you'll see that all these hormones then move into androstenedione and testosterone, and testosterone can be converted into estrogen via aromatase and DHT via 5-alpha reductase. Now, progesterone, DHT, estrogen, androstenedione, dione, testosterone, and DHEA are all in red because they are measured in the diagnostics male hormone profile. And then the 17-hydroxy progesterone is measured in the adrenal stress index test. The important thing to understand here, especially as it relates to um, men and women too, is the idea that testosterone is converted to estrogen via aromatase. Uh, and the more testosterone you have, typically the more you're going to aromatize into estrogen. But men who have very high levels of uh, aromatase activity are going to convert to estrogen. This is where things like man boobs, uh, fat storage around the hips, butt and thighs, and some of these estrogen effects come in. 5-alpha reductase increases DHT, and that may be involved in male pattern baldness uh, for men. And uh, for women, DHT is interesting because there is some indication that it may be more involved with libido enhancement for women uh, than for men, but also menopausal women can end up having more of this DHT effect as well. And there are many natural compounds that are aromatase inhibitors and 5-alpha reductase inhibitors that we can decrease the conversion to DHT and estrogen by using these. Here are some of the things to know about adequate testosterone production. Many people want to take fancy type supplements, you know, like uh, deer velvet antler and tribulus terrestris and things like that. And those things really clinically um, are successful in very, very few. As a matter of fact, I don't even use them in my clinic anymore because I don't see them as being too effective in changing laboratory values and clearing up symptoms. However, there are some things that I have seen very effective. Uh, men with low vitamin D levels tend to have lower testosterone levels, and supplementing those with low vitamin D, lower than 50 nanograms per ml, um, adequate is going to be 50 to 100 nanograms per ml. If you're a man or a woman who has lower than that, you want to optimize those levels, and that can raise testosterone in men. Now, if you're adequate, if you have adequate vitamin D, there is some indication that you might get a testosterone boosting effect, but most information says that that will not be the case, only if you're low. Uh, magnesium deficiency also results in low testosterone. And if you're magnesium deficient or even zinc deficient and you replete those two minerals, you will have increased testosterone much of the time. There is an over-the-counter supplement called ZMA, which combines zinc and magnesium as well as B6 that has been shown in several studies to be effective. Um, and I have only seen it be effective in those who have deficiency in these nutrients. So the number one thing you can do to raise testosterone is make sure you have adequate vitamin D, magnesium, and zinc. And I can tell you that many, many, many men do not. As a matter of fact, most people I measure are not sufficient in any of these, which is really interesting, isn't it? Because we go around searching for fancy type things when really it's pretty easy um, to use these. And if these aren't repleted, uh, it may be the reason some of those other things are not working. You also want to control aromatase and control 5-alpha reductase. Some of the things that do that are saw, saw palmetto extract, green tea, nettles, and pygeum, as well as adaptogens. And so there are 
several things that you can do to bolster testosterone production. The other thing here that I'll say is one of the major things that you want to do to raise testosterone is get adequate sleep, get adequate protein, and lift weights. Um, chronic overexertion and doing cardiovascular type stuff, any kind of extreme calorie deprivation, all those things, uh, sleep deprivation can potentially lower testosterone. So that's what you want to be thinking about as far as testosterone is concerned, rather than some of these fancy uh, supplements that you see uh, that have very good marketing, but not very good track record clinically. These are the things that I just discussed that are going to give you your best bang for your buck.